Cooling towers are used to remove heat from water used in water-cooled applications. In the HVAC industry, this usually means removing heat from a water-cooled chiller. The water-cooled chiller takes the heat from the building. Heat comes from people, lights, plug loads, those are electrical items plugged into electrical outlets, and solar gain through the roofs, walls, and windows. A cooling tower uses two mediums, that is water and air. The water brings the heat from the building, and then we use the ambient air around the cooling tower to absorb that heat and take it away. Okay, so here's the two tower types. You got the cross flow and the counter flow tower. The difference is you look at it, how the air enters the fill material. This is the fill for the cross flow. Here is the fill for the counter flow. The air entering the fill here is horizontally through. As the water is trickling down vertically, air is horizontal. That's a cross flow because it makes a cross. Here, the water is trickling vertical, but the air is also going straight up. Not through here, this is just the louver. This is the fill here, so the air going through the fill is straight up through the fill. So that's a counter flow. Now hot water comes from the chiller and enters here. So you got two water distribution types, pressurized and gravity. On a counter flow, it's pressurized. As the hot water comes in here, goes through this distribution header and into these distribution pipes and through these nozzles, it's sprayed out over the fill. In the cross flow, it dumps into this hot water basin up here. And then the hot water basin has little holes in it and the water trickles out by gravity through the fill into the cold water basin. Both of them have a cold water basin which the cold water pipe, cooled water, is returned to the chiller to pick up the heat from the chiller, water cooled chiller. Now as you can see there's two different types of fans. This one here is belt driven and it's shown on the inside of the tower. You can also have these mounted on the outside. This one here is direct drive there's no belt, it's connected directly to the shaft. But once again, these motors can be mounted on the inside or outside. This one here is showing a optional ladder and working platform because the tower is so high. And then if you look at the differences, this one you can maintain while the system is running because the water is trickling down here and the maintenance guy can come through an access door and then there's a little walking platform above the cold water basin so he doesn't get wet but he can get in the tower as it's running on this counter flow you can't get in the tower because all this water is going to be trickling down over basically the whole footprint of the tower you would get soaked unless you didn't mind getting soaked but and as you can see access to the motor cannot be from the inside here. You would have to actually come around the outside or an access door. As opposed to this one, it's accessible from inside. A small amount of water will be lost to evaporation, blowdown, and drift. The warm water evaporates as it comes into contact with the airstream during the cooling process, while blowdown is water that is bled from the cold water basin to reduce the concentration of salts and other impurities in the circulating water. Drift is when water is lost as in trained liquid droplets that haven't evaporated but are like hitchhikers riding out of the tower on the airstream. Because we don't want to lose this water, the cooling tower comes with drift eliminators installed at the top of the tower in order to capture some of those water droplets leaving with the airstream. Because we lose a little water, we'll need a makeup water pipe connected to the cooling tower to bring in additional water that we lose to evaporation, blowdown, and drift. The cross flow tower 
usually takes up more area. So you have the length times the width is much greater for the same tonnage as the length and the width of a counterflow. The counterflow for the same tonnage is going to be taller. So when figuring out where to put the tower, you have to look at the physical area of the space and how the air can move around, what walls may be in the way. Because of the larger footprint of the cross-flow tower, its operating weight and shipping weight is often more, and it may also require additional structural support legs. When you get to about 800 tons, then this differences can change between the counterflow and the cross-flow tower footprint area. You can see for these BAC towers, these 10 models from 293 tons all the way up to 484 tons, they use the same box footprint size. It's the same size for all 10 models. The only thing that will change to get more capacity is the height. You can see these first two are the same height and then the next four are the same height and same with the last four. The thing that will change with the height to get more capacity is the horsepower of the fan and the CFM. So you can see 10 model numbers with the same footprint, the same size box. The height will change and the horsepower will change to get more CFM. So these four here are all exactly the same height. The only difference is the exact same box, exact same height. The only difference, horsepower, CFM. I want to show you these two towers, the cross flow and the counter flow, on a typical building, a high rise building downtown LA. As you can see, this right here, this is our cross flow. And you can tell by the large area to the side of the fans. The fan sits in the middle and you have these areas off to the side where the fill is located. You'll find cooling towers on medium sized building to large buildings. Here's another high rise. This is going to be a counter flow. As you can see that the cooling towers on this building, the fan takes up just about the total area of the top of the cooling tower. So you can only have fill directly below because there's no room on the side of the fans for fill. So this is how you tell the difference. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.